Okay, close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch the breath coming in, watch it going out. You want to think a word together with a breath, you can think Bhutto. Bhutto means awake. It's the name of the Buddha. He woke up from his sleep of ignorance, in which he was causing so suffering for himself and suffering for others. He saw that he didn't have to do that anymore. And that's the kind of quality we want to develop in our minds. We've learned about the goodness of the Buddha's teachings from people that we respect, people we love. Many of them have passed on now. But we still want to hold on to the goodness of those teachings. We learn from them what was good. And what was good about it was that it doesn't depend on their being around or their not being around. The goodness is still there in the world, if you take advantage of it, if you practice it. The same when we see other people around us practicing things that are not skillful. Our goodness shouldn't have to depend on them. We want to have a goodness inside that's really solid. This is why we have to meditate, because we want to find a well-being inside that doesn't depend on things outside. Because if all your well-being in the mind depends on having enough food, clothing, shelter, and medicine, then what happens when, you're going to happen when those things aren't enough? You want to have something else inside to depend on. This is why we meditate, to get this sense of well-being inside. You want to be at ease with the breath, solidly with the breath. So when the breath comes in, it feels good and nourishing. When it goes out, it feels refreshing. And this way the mind begins to gain a sense of the goodness inside, which has, doesn't have to depend on people outside at all. This way you can stick with the other principles of the teaching as well, because you have this strength that comes from within. So when other people are good to you, you're good back. When other people are not good to you, you can still be good back to them. And this is why we spread goodwill to all beings without exception. Because we want to make sure that when we engage with all beings, that regardless of whether we like them or not, whether they're good people or not good people, we want our goodness to be solid. Because that's the one thing we have some control over, the one thing for which we're really responsible. As for the people who have been good to us, who have passed on, we want to dedicate our goodness to them. It's a sign of our remembering them and being true to their memory by maintaining that goodness as well. So the goodness is what gives meaning to life. It's what makes human life better than the life of animals. It's because we know what's right and what's wrong, and we can act on what's uh, act on that knowledge to give rise to a happiness for ourselves that's blameless, a happiness that's solid, and encourage others in the same direction. But whether they follow your example or not, that's something that's really up to them. So you want to make sure that you set a good example. That's the best you can do for other people, and at the same time you maintain this goodness for your own purposes. Because after all, the Buddha said, this is for our own welfare and happiness. You observe the precepts for your own welfare and happiness. You give, you're give, you generous and give gifts for your own welfare and happiness. You try to encourage other people to do that for their welfare and happiness, but it has to start with you. And where does it start? It starts here in the mind. Some people say, well, I have to be generous first, and then I can practice the precepts, and then I can do meditation. But the three qualities need each other to be really strong. So you want to be generous and meditate, and practice the precepts, and meditate at the same time. That way all three of these activities that give rise to happiness can be really strong. And the happiness you give rise to will be happiness that's complete. It won't be missing this or missing that, because it falls in the line with the, the Buddhist teachings, the heart of the Buddhist teachings, which we'll be commemorating in a few days on Magapucha. He said to abandon all forms of evil, to develop skillfulness to the full extent, and then to cleanse the mind. And can we abandon behavior that's against the precepts? We develop skillfulness in being generous not only with things, but also with our time, with our energy, with our knowledge, with our forgiveness. And then we cleanse the mind through the meditation. This way we're the, the heart of the Buddhist teachings is going to be a complete heart. It won't be missing this ventricle or this part. It's a heart that can pump life into the rest of your life, pump goodness into the rest of your life.